Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do, so press this bell and enable to send notifications. The Bermuda Triangle is famous for strange happenings and disappearances in the ocean, nestled between Florida and Bermuda. That famous area has a smaller cousin further north, centered around Glastonbury Mountain in the southwestern part of Vermont. This mysterious area is known as the Bennington Triangle. The Bennington Triangle has a history that predates the colonization of North America and persists to this day. It has inspired books and movies, as well as supernatural reports of Bigfoot, UFOs, and interdimensional portals. The truth about Bennington Triangle remains unknown, but the area has mysteriously swallowed as many as 40 intrepid hikers and residents. Number 7. Native American Warnings It's stated in Joseph A. Citro's 1996 book, Passing Strange, True Tales of New England Hauntings and Horrors, that Native Americans refused to set foot on Glastonbury Mountain unless they were burying their dead. They believed that the whole mountain was cursed land because of four winds that met there in an eternal struggle. While most refer to this as a myth, there is some truth to it. The wind pattern on Glastonbury Mountain is so erratic that weather changes suddenly and plants grow at odd angles. Another myth attributed to the native people of Vermont is that they believed an enchanted stone among the carns on top of the mountain could swallow a man whole. As reported by Davy Russell in X Project Paranormal Magazine, a person would stand on the rock to survey the area from the highest point and find themselves suddenly swallowed whole. That person would never be heard from again. Number 6. A Ghost Town Glastonbury seems to have been slated to be a ghost town since its very first day. In 1761, Benning Wentworth drew the boundaries of the town on a map without ever stepping foot there. The area had rough terrain and a very short growing season, so settling was an uphill battle all the way to the 1800s. Literally, there were technically two towns, Fayville and South Glastonbury, on either side of the mountain, but they were never connected due to the impossible incline between them. Unfortunately, the extreme logging of the past left the mountainside unprotected from soil erosion. In 1897, a massive flood destroyed much of the railway into Glastonbury. No more attempts were made to reinvent the town. People left the area to start over, leaving the town with a rapidly dwindling population. Ripley's Believe It or Not documented the Mattinson family in 1930. The three members of the family made up the entire town by themselves and held every office available between them. In 1937, the town was officially unincorporated. As of the 2010 census, a mere eight people lived there. Number 5. Strange Occurrences Since the 1800s Reports of strange lights in the sky, sounds with no explanation, and odd odors on the mountain predate colonial settlements. These reports, combined with many strange disappearances, have led to speculation about UFOs and wormholes in the area. Still, the strangest report may be the Bennington Monster. Thought to be an early Bigfoot or Sasquatch, the monster has been described as well over 1.8 meters, 6 feet tall, with hair from its head to its toes. The first sighting of the monster was reported in the early 19th century when it rushed a stagecoach on a washed-out road. The beast knocked the stagecoach onto its side and fled into the dark with a roar. Luckily, no one was harmed. There were strange happenings in the Bennington Triangle that were less fantastic than a massive ape man or gun-wielding nudist as well. In 1892, a sawmill worker, Henry McDowell, drunkenly bludgeoned a co-worker to death with a rock after he heard strange voices telling him to attack. He was committed to an asylum but managed to escape and vanish. Only five years after that murder, another strange one followed nearby. John Harbour was a prominent Woodford citizen who went into Bigford Hollow, just south of Glastonbury, to hunt. He was shot by persons unknown, but was found with his fully loaded gun next to him and seemed to have been dragged several yards. Those who investigated his death were left wondering why he was so easily shot with a fully loaded gun and why his assailant would bother to put the gun next to him after dragging him. This murder has gone unsolved and will likely stay that way. Number 4. The Disappearances The Bennington Triangle's most enduring unsolved mysteries are the disappearances that plagued the area from 1945 to 1950. In that five-year span, several people went missing on or near Glastonbury Mountain. 
The first was a 75-year-old man named Mitty Rivers, who often served as a mountain guide. He was leading a group back to their camp in November 1945 when he got ahead of them just enough to be out of sight. In that short time, he completely vanished. It's unlikely that he became lost because he was highly experienced at navigating the mountain. Nonetheless, he was never seen again. In 1949, three hunters went missing on the mountain. That same year, James E. Tetford went missing while on a bus trip from St. Albans to the town of Bennington. In 1950, eight-year-old Paul Jepson went missing from his Bennington home. Police dogs were able to trace his scent to the highway, but no further. He was coincidentally wearing a red jacket similar to Paula Weldon's coat. That year would see the last of disappearances with Frida Langer. She disappeared while hiking with her cousin and friends. Her clothes had gotten wet during a hike and she went back to camp to change. When the group realized that she had never arrived, a massive search was launched. Volunteers, police, firefighters, and the military all joined together to search, but she was never found alive. Number three, remains lost and found. Only one body was ever recovered from the disappearances on the mountains. Frida Langer's body was found the following May. Search parties had previously heavily combed the area she was found in, leading authorities to speculate that there was foul play. Unfortunately, her body was too decomposed to give any insight into her cause of death. The advanced decomposition only made someone's decision to move her there more mysterious though. The process would have likely been messy and conspicuous. Far more odd than the discovery of Langer's body are those that were never found at all. There is dangerous wildlife on Glastonbury Mountain, but their attacks leave behind tons of evidence. Bears don't usually swallow a person whole. Search parties were frustrated to find no signs of the missing people whatsoever. Both Weldon and Jepson were wearing bright red coats that should have been easy to spot on their own. Rivers and Langer seemed to disappear suddenly without being too far from their companions. Tetford's case is odder still, since he disappeared from a bus. He was surrounded by witnesses, but still vanished between stops. Number 2. A Serial Killer The pattern of disappearances have led some to suggest a serial killer was responsible. Perhaps someone was extremely successful in abducting and killing people near the highway or on the mountainside. As appealing as this explanation is, there are a few problems. The first is that Langer and Rivers went missing on the mountain near friends. It would be extremely risky for a serial killer to abduct someone with their friends within earshot. The second problem is that the victims don't follow a pattern. Serial killers tend to have a type. It would be extremely rare for one to pick up two elderly men, an 18-year-old woman, an 8-year-old boy, and a 53-year-old woman. An opportunity killer who is fine with a wide range of victims wouldn't fit the same profile as one who would be willing to risk grabbing rivers and languor near their parties. Number 1. Practical Explanations In all the research that has been done to answer the maddening questions of the Bennington Triangle, some practical answers have been found. They make sense, even if they aren't entirely satisfying. One explanation is hypothermia. Temperatures on the mountain can drop very low, and the disappearances did all happen in the winter. When experiencing hypothermia, people might engage in terminal burrowing. This is a survival behavior that drives people to find someplace small and remote to huddle. It gets people out of the wind and may provide enough warmth to help slow the process of freezing to death. But it usually kicks in too late and just makes it hard for the person to be found. Another explanation has to do with the area's history as a mining town. The mountainside is littered with unmarked mine shafts that may cause hikers who go off trail to plummet to their deaths. Both of these can explain why the missing people were never found. One more complicating factor is the odd wind pattern on the mountain. Most places have a wind pattern that influences how plants grow. We don't consciously acknowledge it, but this pattern of growth is one of the ways we orient ourselves when outdoors. Glastonbury Mountain has no consistent wind pattern. So plants grow in odd ways. Many modern hikers have had difficulty navigating the mountain for this reason, and it is the basis for the Native American myth about the four winds. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by clicking the like button. Do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up my next video.